We have with us Reverend Father Dr. Francis Xavier, Rector of Loyola College, Chennai. A dynamic personality, well known for his inventing the 25th hour concept and practice through time management, highly intellectual person and scholar, man of the poor and a lot of Jesuit. Father, we are indeed very happy to have you with us here today, and now this time is yours. I take this privilege to invite you to address this gathering. Over to you, Father. Morning to you all. Reverend Father Boniface, the Rector, Reverend Father Thomas, Principal of Loyola College, Reverend Father Lawrence, the Catholic Martin of the Asati, Father Chakdish, the Katrina, and all the speakers, professors, and my dear fellow Jesuits. Thank you for inviting me. A scientific perspective. The thread of thought in my sharing would be comprehension, consciousness, and communication. <coughs> Science is about observation, measurement, and interpretation about how the reality functions. In science, subjective observations are interpreted based on objective measurements for all to understand. Further, science continues to provide more and more intuition that often lead to religious enlightenment. Science believes that the self does exist. The experience of having a self is expressed through the feelings of pain and of pleasure, of control, intentionality and agency, of self-governance, of acting according to one's beliefs and desires, the sense of engaging with the physical world and the social world. All these offer scientific evidence of the existence of the self. The scientific self implies skills, competencies, qualities, a disposition one acquires in one's life. And a scientific perspective of self develops through two streams. One, physical or biological sciences leading to human development and the two social sciences with a focus on interactions, relationships and communication. <coughs> Science perceives and understands the self as an integrated growth process of awareness tending to fullness. It's an understanding as potential becoming actual reality through critical thinking leading to social consciousness. Non-physical consciousness might understand the self as creator designed to be the essence of human beings and perhaps the other beings as well, using the non-physical substance of soul or spirit. We can understand that science in general perceives the self as the potential to comprehend the reality and the impulse to communicate for integral unification and fullness of the universe. Self as comprehension. The self can be viewed mainly under three phases, namely physical, mental and spiritual. There would be many intermediate phases as well if one wants to go in detail. One, physical life. In the science of evolution, the theory of evolution has several variants. 
Darwin is the most scientifically established one. Darwin's theory that all species of life have descended from common ancestors is now widely accepted and considered as a fundamental non-scientific science. Evolution is considered as development of complexity of nervous system. This might imply that we might possess something in common along with something specific acquired down the process chain of evolution. Two, mental life is the outcome of physical evolution. And this stage consists of ego, ego superego, according to Sigmund Freud. The ego, ego and super, superego are a set of three concepts in psychoanalytic theory describing distinct interacting agents in the psychic apparatus. The three agents are theoretical constructs that describe the activities and interactions of the mental life of a person. And three, spiritual life, according to Teilhard, is the culmination of the process of evolution. Physical evolution becomes intellectual evolution. This was termed as noosphere, dominated by consciousness, the mind, and interpersonal relationships. Taylor considered the technological and scientific advancements as byproducts of this phase. Then comes in the spiritual evolution, where the entire process converges and merges into the Omega point. Finally, the process of material elements evolving into physical entity, moving up the ladder of evolution as intellectual and finally spiritual plane, is actually completing the ascending spiral of consciousness. When the material element becomes evolved as physical entity, there comes in sensation. When physical move into mental state, there was thinking and emotions. And when finally spiritual state dawned, there came in consciousness. The self or specificity was dormant in elements. It became sensient feeling on the physical level as individual entity in the society and finally it grew in the concepts of the universe. It might be difficult to demarcate the borderline or transition from material to immaterial, the non-living to the living beings. The comprehension with ascending intensity as the phase of intra, inter and trans comprehension. Comprehension of the self begins as a moment, whether according to the philosophy of Leibniz as an indivisible and hence ultimately simple entity such as an atom or a person, or a single cell organism, especially a flagellate protegin. Here, the intracomprehension is perceived as dormant. Then, as nervous system become more and more complex in the evolution process, intercomprehension comes in extending from one cell to other similar and different entities or species. This state ushers in transcomprehension in realizing the material becoming intellectual, spiritual, or a power beyond. In, that order. in the Einsteinian equation, E is equal to mc square, matter is presented as equivalent to energy. David Bohm, an American British scientist, argues that reality is tripartite, namely matter and mass, energy and consciousness. He would state, I quote, Consciousness is 
a coherent whole which is never static or complete but which is an unending process of movement and unfoldment in the world. Energy could be understood as physical, mental, spiritual, extending to divine, that is, divine energy as grace. The final comprehension is converging in or merging with the divine as the end station of reality known as the Omega Point, where the evolution of material ascends into physical, intellectual, spiritual and divine reality. Hawking and Blaninow propose in their book The Grand Design that there is an intelligent or grand design that keeps the universe going, but there is no discussion about who the grand designer might be. Now, self as consciousness. The initial evolution process, namely thinking and feeling, brings in the onset of intelligence as reflexive knowledge, manifesting as comprehension. We may have noticed that it takes longer for the heart to accept what the head already knows. From knowing flows feeling. Comprehension ascends into consciousness that grows out of and transcends perception, thoughts, feelings, maturing as awareness. Consciousness at its simplest is sentience or awareness of internal and external existence. For more, consciousness involves awareness, attention, perception, acts of understanding and perhaps in more. Freud proposed three levels of awareness, namely a conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious. These three levels correspond to or overlap with these ideas of id, ego and superego. The conscious level comprises all we are aware of about ourselves and our surroundings. The pre-conscious are memories which could be retrieved from the past experience. And the unconscious is an area outside of conscious awareness which are stored out of our awareness, but could nevertheless influence our behavior. The conscious level is considered to have seven states, starting with first individual focused, then universal oriented, and finally dissolving into the ultimate consciousness. These states are waking consciousness, Deep sleep, dreaming, transcendental consciousness, cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, and unity consciousness. The first three are individual related, whether physically active or not. It is associated with functional nervous system. The next two transcend the individual and take on social and cosmic dimensions. Finally, it converges or merges and dissolves in deep consciousness. The mind body could be trained to reach the universal or unity consciousness. Once again, as Bohm would put it, deep down, the consciousness of mankind is one. This evolutionary process from nervous system becoming consciousness concretizes in communication. The ultimate consciousness is that there is energy which pervades and unites everything and this interconnectedness is realized as communication. And finally, self as communication. Knowing and comprehending oneself matures as becoming conscious of others or of other entities culminating in communication with them. 
The development of sensors starting from single cell to plants, animals, and humans are classified as touch, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and awareness. Communication in the brain is due to neurons as chemical energy via neurotransmitters. Some call the sixth sense or the seventh one as propriety proprioception, which makes our brain understand where our body is in space. Proprioception, for example, enables a person to touch his or her finger to the tip of their nose even with their eyes closed and to climb steps without looking at each one. It is related to the development or evolution Genes. This evolutionary development not only results in growth of perception but also communication, intra, inter, and trans communication. Harari, in his book Sapiens, a brief history of humankind, narrates how human beings began to communicate first through sound, then with the signs followed by drawings before a primitive form of language emerged. This communication has gone through so much of advancement that people think that we could now even communicate with the aliens from other planets. The movie E.T. The Extraterrestrial by Spielberg brings out, at least in imagination, the possibility of understanding aliens and the ability of the aliens demonstrating their potential to learn our language. Russell narrates in their book The Sparrow how a Jesuit, after capturing a few notes from the outer space, could go to that space, contact the people who were musically talented, and build a communication with them. Recently, as you know, Astronomers stumbled upon unknown space objects, beaming, beaming out radio signals every 18 minutes. And the physicist Kapra, in his tower physics, draws the parallel between the modern physics and the Eastern mysticism. According to our physics, one, everything is interconnected. Two, every entity from planets to sub subatomic particles is ever moving and ever changing. And three, this constant change and motion lead from temporality to permanent unity. Science of intellectual knowledge discovers self as an integral part of heart and emotion, eventually leading to self-realization or self-actualization through consciousness and communication. From comprehension, consciousness and communication, the self begins to discover much more than self as a monad to a particle in the ocean of the cosmos. 1. The discovery of self starts from knowing oneself as originating from atoms, molecules, cells, etc. As the physical self grows up, psychological and social aspects bring in medical comprehension, eventually leading to the limited comprehension to incomparable admiration of something beyond known as transcendence or divinity in religious understanding. Two, the intellectual knowledge has led to the realization that humankind was interested in the task to work and to take care of the earth where we live, move and have our being as the offspring of the power that created us in his image and likeness, Imago Dei. In fact, the understanding became the consciousness of our power as we gain more and more knowledge, insight and expertise in science and technology. Humankind has begun to exploit our common
on home and when digital society has brought in faceless world, the more communication facilities we have, the less we keep up with personal communication with each other. Three, the comprehension of self and its consciousness have brought in self-destruction. Christenberg, in his soul-searching book, The Invisible Rainbow, explains how electricity has shaped the modern world, but at the same time, how cell towers, Wi-Fi, 5G, etc. have affected our health and environment, causing major diseases of industrialized civilization, such as heart diseases, diabetes, cancer, etc., caused by electrical pollution as radiation. Four, but there is also the possibility of self-actualization. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis speaks on care for our common home. <coughs> he laments environmental degradation and global warming and calls all people of the world to take swift and unified global action to save this world and our lives as well. Five, in the process of discovering self, we see on the one hand a scientific understanding of life cycle from Big Bang to Big Crunch, which seems to be a parallel to Thomas Aquinas' Exitus et Reditus concept. In a natural sense, this cycle could be understood like the cycle of seasons in the year. Tender shoots in the spring become beautiful leaves in the summer, but when they act, there is the foliage and fall of leaves giving way in the winter to the trees bringing in melancholic sea to begin all over again in the next spring. The cyclic process indicates that unless leaves fall down and disappear, no new blade would appear. This temporal reality makes one understand that we are invited to recognize and grow in universal fraternity and eventually we will merge with higher energy. A self that was dominant in elements emerges alive in birth, grows in understanding and consciousness, attains fullness in communication and finally merges in the higher energy of power, the ultimate consciousness. And the revelation is, discovering of self from scientific perspective begins from knowledge about oneself, becomes comprehension, grows as consciousness of the universe and expands in communication with all therein. This process transforms one from material to spiritual realm. For Hopkins, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. Francis of Assisi realizes the interrelated universe where his conscious of brother son, sister moon. Ignatius of Loyola understands how he discovers self from elements to divinity when he writes in the spiritual exercises number 235, I quote, I will consider how God dwells in creatures, in the elements, giving them existence, in the plants, giving them life, in the animals, giving them sensation, in human beings, giving them intelligence, and finally, how in this way dwells also in myself, giving me existence, life, sensation and intelligence and even further making me his temple since I am created as a likeness and image of the divine majesty and of the God. Thus, the human being is the fullness of self which has been evolving from the elements, plants, animals and human beings. This evolution of discovery of self goes even beyond as universal consciousness and its ultimate convergence to the good energy or the primordial energy or the ultimate consciousness. And this divine omnipresence or Ignatius 
is the hub of contact and communication with all entities in the universe as he levels and works for me in all the creatures on the face of the earth within the web of communication. Kapra also sees a parallel between particle physics and the power beyond. He draws a parallel between Shiva's cosmic dance and the dance of subatomic particles which are in constant motion. According to Kapra, I quote, Modern physics has shown that the rhythm of creation and destruction is not only manifest in the turn of the seasons and in the birth and death of all living creatures, but is also the very essence of inorganic matter. And that, for the modern physicists, then Shiva's dance is the dance of subatomic matter. End of the quote. The human history has been an evolution of discovery. When fire was discovered, the self of the energy of youth. When electricity was discovered, the self of modernity made in growth. When digitization was discovered, the self of new age dawned. But all these discoveries have helped us discover self better, stage by stage, ever ascending in understanding, especially its potential, both positive and negative. In our days, the discovery of self is taking us more towards destruction of self. We are able to discover self of meaning in life, individual and collective. Finding meaning in life would bring in a sense of responsibleness for the very essence of human existence towards the rest in the reality. As the pre Indian prophecy says, when the last tree has been cut down, the last fish caught, the last river poisoned, only then will we realize that one cannot eat money. It is already late, but before it is too late, we need to discover self for goodness, fullness and happiness in life. The self is also capable of finding creativity in a crisis. Human beings have weathered many a crisis in the past and have managed to bounce back every time. Self has that potential energy for being to becoming. As science explores the how of the reality, the self understands the why of it and strives to find fullness of meaning and integrated reality. Thank you very much.